Hey, welcome to the Cheap Air Gunner channel. It's Cherokee Steve. I just wanted to touch on the fact that I've got some bad news. And that's in relationship to the KTHPA. I was shooting it last night and noticed, number one, I was down to about 12 MPA on the pressure gauge. Uh, I've had no issues with filling it up to 15 MPA. That's the max I would want to go to in shooting it. But I had already filled it, had already shot it. As you may remember, if you watched a previous video, I was testing the gun without the moderator and with the moderator. And had it filled up at that point. What I noticed last night when I was shooting it, the velocity seemed to be down. I'm talking mid 700s, 750 feet per second, give or take. And I didn't think that the amount of shots I had taken leading up to that would account for that type of velocity, thought it would have been a lot higher. So I went ahead and filled it back up to the 15 MPA. And I took a shot. And I got, I believe, 775 on my chronograph. Now, I have had 826 as a, a fully filled first shot velocity. With a 13.43 grain pellet, the Falcons, which is what I was shooting last night. So I'm like, that's a 50 feet per second drop, and something seems to be wrong. And my first thought was that it's probably the transfer port. I really didn't think I did a great job of cutting it nice and straight and flat. The last time I had disassembled and reassembled the gun. So, took the breech off, <clears throat> excuse me, took the breech off, checked everything out. Actually, to be quite honest, the transfer port was cut much better than I thought it was. Was the length an issue? I wasn't sure yet. But as I closely inspected things, I saw a hairline crack in the breech itself on the underside, and it was quite long. Uh, it, was, it ran from the transfer port forward all the way through the area I had ground down so that it would fit on top of these different diameter areas of the kit. So, that seemed to me to pretty much explain everything. Why I'm seeing there is air that is escaping uh, from the transfer port area. Not the transfer port itself, but the, the breaches transfer port. Before it can actually get into the barrel, I'm sure some of that uh highly pressurized air is escaping through that crack. So, for the time being, I figured I would take some RTV gasket maker, Permatex, put a nice uh, light coating along the underside of the breech. I also put a nice uh, ring of gasket material around the outside of the transfer port that is sticking up out of the hammer tube slash valve tube. Put it around the transfer port, nice thin coating running from uh, the transfer port up to the front of the breech and reattached it. Now, it takes 24 hours to cure, so I'm waiting for that to see if that brings the velocities back up. 
I'm debating whether or not I should order a another breach from the supplier I've gotten the kit in this particular breach from. Uh, do I order a Crossman steel breach and see if that will work? Um, first of all, first things first, and I should just take it from being patient, waiting for this gasket material to RTV to uh, cure and uh, see how well it seals the area. Even a worst case scenario, even with the crack and with the crack, you know, existing prior to me disassembling uh, the breach and having that air leak, it was shooting 775. So as far as uh, using the gun to uh, hunt squirrel with, uh, that should be more than adequate uh, velocity, even though the gun is capable of much more. I'm fairly certain that the reason the crack formed is because of the the grinding and the material I took away so that the breech would fit. Now, I I wouldn't hesitate to do the same thing again. It's the only way the breech is going to fit and, at least for some time period, seal properly. As a matter of fact, if I were to order another breach, I would do the exact same thing again. Now, I'd pay more attention and remove, literally, move as little amount of material that's needed to get that to sit flat. I may have gone uh, a tad too far with the amount of material I removed. That very well may have led to that uh, crack. The one thing about this particular kit is that little tiny screw, which it has in front, underneath the bolt and in front of the bolt when the bolt is cocked back. The one I covered up with some black wax just to get the pellet heads not dropping in. That particular screw, I would pay extra attention to not really overly cranking down on. Now, everything put together, the fact that the breech wasn't fitting properly and me grinding it so that it would fit properly, I probably was going too tight with that screw. That may have contributed to the cracking of the material as well. Anyway, this material, if I were to order it, it, lends itself to removal. I probably wouldn't, even with my machining experience, being able to clamp something like a, a steel or a brass breech and remove material from the underside area that I would need to remove it from wouldn't be the easiest thing in the world. Also, being able to do it on my own time wouldn't be the easiest thing in the world. So, this POM material uh, that this breach is made out of uh, does lend itself to removal of the material with something simple like a hand Dremel tool. So, I may go that route, but... In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy the fact that I've got two other great Crossman carbines waiting for this RTV sealant to cure and shoot those. The, uh, the KT CO2 version, which I was able to get some increased velocity out of simply by changing the hammer spring, and my 2289, which produces well over 700 feet per second as long as you pump it up enough. So let's get to some shooting with those guns and see what different pellets will do out of them. Okay, let's get to it. KT CO2 Crossman Carbine. Well, 
we'll do the Predator Polymag first. So, some pretty interesting numbers there, as I posted the velocity for each shot. The first three shots being, I did two three-shot groups, the first group being shot with the Predator Polymags, and the second group being shot with the h and Terminators. And the Terminator is a slightly heavier pellet than a Predator Polymag. And as you can see, the first three shots from the lighter pellet actually produced lower velocities than the three shots taken with the H&N Terminator, a slightly heavier pellet. I thought that was very interesting. Now, if I had to guess, I haven't looked up or know beyond any doubt that there's a difference in the head size of these two 22 caliber pellets, I wouldn't be surprised at all if there is. Possibly the H&N is, you know, one one thousandth of an inch smaller in diameter than the Predator Polymags, somewhat of a looser fit. Less drag, less resistance as it goes down the barrel. But believe me, that one one thousandth of an inch can make that difference. That is beyond questioning. And a lot of the times you need to be familiar with exactly what your barrel is at. And that's, that's why. People always are talking about finding a pellet that your gun likes because those little tiny minute differences make a huge difference as far as velocity and accuracy. Speaking of accuracy, this is the target I was shooting at down here in my 10 meter basement range. This target was what I did to three-shot group with the Predator Polymags. And I've got two here in the black of the target. This one down here was one of the shots from the Predator Polymags. And most likely I'm going to attribute that to me. The velocities were consistent. There wasn't any significant drop. So the low shot uh, certainly can't be justified by a decrease in CO2. I also waited between shots for the tube and the capsule to warm itself back up. But this particular target over here was with the H&N Terminator. And as you can see, all three shots in this group were in the black. giving you a size idea of how big that is. It's about an inch and a half. So, two very good shots with the Predator Polymag. One, I most likely just moved on as I was pulling the trigger. Three very good shots from the H&M Terminator. So, 
I'm pleasantly surprised, uh, as I continue to be, with this CO2 version of the 2400 KT, uh, the velocity that it produces. Uh, let me get to specific numbers. I'm sorry, I'm jumping the gun, so to speak. Uh, the three shots from the Predator Polymag uh, going in order from first down to third, 525 feet per second, 518 feet per second, 519 feet per second. That's an average of 520.66 feet per second. So Predator Polymag's average over 520. Those shots in order produce a muzzle energy of 9.79 foot-pounds of energy, 9.54 foot-pounds of energy, and 9.57 foot-pounds of energy for an average of 9.63. The H&N Terminators produced the following velocities, 525 feet per second, 522 feet per second, and 527 feet per second. Muzzle energy in order with those velocities comes out to 10.02 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle, 9.9 .9 foot-pounds of energy, and 10.09 foot-pounds of energy for an average of 10, exactly 10 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle with the H&N Terminators. So, over nine and a half foot-pounds of energy with the Predator Polymags, exactly 10 foot-pounds of energy with the Terminators. If I were to practice, uh, I, you know, I will, practice more. Get my groupings smaller. Is this a gun I would consider? At a close enough range, maybe 10 yards. Uh, you know, if I've got a rabbit I really don't want in my yard, I may use it to take a shot on that rabbit. As long as I know I can put it in the right spot at 10 foot pounds of energy, that's decent. I'm Again, I'm just really pleasantly surprised with this gun and what it can do, especially being a CO2 being temperature sensitive, it is very cool down here in my basement. So these numbers should go up as the temperature rises and I'm able to shoot outside. So that's it. Uh, personally, I would give a thumbs up, definitely a big thumbs up to the H&N Terminators. Uh, Predator Polymags. Like I said, I'm definitely sure that the one bad shot, accuracy-wise, was my fault. So, very similar pellets, very similar results. And for the next video, I will do the same test with the same pellets, but out of my 2289 pumper, which has a slightly shorter barrel. So... Till the next time, thanks for checking out this video. You guys stay safe and shoot safe.